Okay, before we go into the study session, we have board member comments and a uh, board chair report, which will be brief to non-existent. Hey. I'll match you. Let's do let's do ping pong with chair reports because I got a bunch saved up too. I've I've been skipping that chair report because we ha don't have. Yes, we are open though. We are open for board. We are open. We are there. So board member comments. The floor is open. Member Bogus and Member Green and online. If you're um, if you have board member comments, we're opening the floor now to that. So yes, board member Bogus. I would just simply say thank you for keeping this agenda item and honoring it. I have nothing else to say right now. Thank you. I will just say thank you for your comment. <laughs> Member Green. I too am echoing what Member Bogus just said. Thank you. I'm just kidding. I actually have a message. <laughs> okay. I actually have kind of, I'd wanted to share this yesterday and I'm kind of sad because a lot of our staff is gone, but this is a highlight. Um, so I don't know, maybe I could forward this to you, Superintendent Dixon, and you could share this. But um, so last week, five Utah ACTE members were recognized as finalists, finalists at the National ACTE Awards Gala. Two of them brought the national title home. And in our district, um, at my daughter's school, uh, Mrs. Plew was one of those finalists. And so they go through this big, you know, um, interview and, you know, things that they have to compile. She's already been a star in our lives and for that school and the things that she's done for our some of our students. And they started a courtyard club, which they've, you know, completely renovated this space. Uh, my daughter's involved with that. And it's, we call it kind of like the secret garden. And she's brought... Uh, she says that three students, I believe, have started greenhouses because of her effort, you know, just the introduction that they have because of the floriculture and the horticulture and, and those types of courses. So um, her, just a quick review of what that was. In January of 2023, we all won our individual categories at the Utah ACTE conference. We moved on to region five to compete against nine other states and Utah took five of the eight regional award titles. We then went through a series of steps in an interview as one of the five national finalists in our individual categories, and she included the names and categories below. So, uh, Michaela Plew, UACTE Region, I, I'm gonna look silly, the V is a five, right? Region five and national finalist, new teacher of the year, uh, Jason uh, Gobble, uh, AG educator at North Severe, um, he was uh, Region 5 and National Finalist Teacher of the Year. Kip Hansen, AG Educator at North St. Pete, uh, UACTE, Region 5 and National Finalist uh, uh, Carl Perkins Award. Uh, Jan Jardine was uh, UACTE, Region 5 and National Winner Lifetime Achievement Award. And Rob Belknap, UACTE, Region 5 and National Winner Administrator of the Year. And so I just wanted to send a shout out and say, Utah was pretty cool this year and um, good things going on. So thank you. Thank you very much. Remember, Green, we'll make out of that for a question. Thank you, Member Green. Member Booth. Thank you. Some of you may have heard from uh, one of our one of my um, folks from uh, down in the Provo School District, uh, who she's a grandmother. Uh, in her retirement, her hobby has become um, researching lunch times and how the amount of time that you spend in lunch uh, affects wasting food, affects nutrition, affects children's health. Um, and she has done extensive research and uh, I believe has shared uh, an email with most of the board at some point 
uh, about her research, and I spoke with her for about an hour and and got a copy of all of her research, which I'm going through the holidays at some point to pass on to you. Uh, she just got a ton of really good information. And not that I would feel as a state that we want to overreach into the local district and tell them how to organize their lunch times, but she's done the research right down to the district by district. She knows how much time each child has for lunch. And uh, uh, some of some of our schools have 15 minutes um, that they're actually allowed to be in the in the lunchroom before they head out to lunchtime recess. And she's been doing research on, in her own district regarding uh, how much food is going into the garbage can because they just simply don't have time to sit down and eat. And um, and what an impact she's sat down with Wendy Dow, the new uh, superintendent in Provo district. And uh, they've decided they're going to make some changes. And uh, uh, she's got a committee and principals group all working together to try to figure out. She's also come up with ideas on how you can um, possibly make some adjustments to this and that and the other in order to give them an extra five minutes. And uh, uh, so I just think it's interesting. It has implications for kids' health. It certainly has implications when I think of the kids in Zimbabwe that I shared with you in my board member message in January who only get, food-wise, they only eat what they are served at school because there's no food at home uh, in Harare in that particular school of 700 students. I think of them eating that little bit of porridge that the Ezra Taft Benson um, um, School of Nutrition, Food and Nutrition or whatever that is down at BYU has designed as the perfect source of your daily nutritional requirements. And they have that little porridge, and that's basically all they eat um, in Harare because uh, there's nothing else available. And then I think of these kids in all of our schools, not because they wouldn't eat it if they had just a little bit more time, but they're just rushed, and they'd rather play, so they throw it all away, and we're <laughs> just seeing all that food go down the drain uh, with all of these kids starving. You know, I, I, my mom used to say, oh, think of the starving children in China and all this stuff when I was a kid. I'd try to get me to eat my carrots or whatever it was that I wasn't too excited about. Um, but I think it's it's something that we as parents and grandparents and as very interested educators might want to wrap our hands or heads around and maybe make just some suggestions of, of uh, you might want to consider this because this is what a lot of people who know about children nutrition and about uh, its impact on education uh, are saying about these limited lunch periods. And uh, so I'm going to be sharing that with you, just forewarning you that uh, uh, you'll be getting something in your email and uh, hope it'll be of interest. And maybe we want to discuss it at some point in the future, uh, see if we can't improve um, the amount of food that the kids are eating and uh, the amount of time they have to, to eat it. Thank you. Thank you, Member Booth. Appreciate that. Member Wood. I just wanted to share. So last month when uh, Kelsey brought the National Board Certified Teachers to our um, board meet member educational highlight, um, I took the opportunity to connect with them and spent a morning at Rose Park Elementary and was able to be in a classroom for four hours. I was, we, we did rotations from kindergarten through third grade. And then afterwards, spent an hour where I met with the teachers and they talked about the some different things, the intentional educational design that they had used to work with their students, um, the, the way they 
picked chose partners for hands-on activities very specifically as to who they paired up so that that you know one could lead and one could follow and and support them the use of technology and then different math um hands-on math things and at the end uh, I, I just was so appreciative to see um the inspiring education that's going on in these classrooms and they asked me to just share the invitation to any of you if any of you would like to to do a similar thing to come and visit and see the great work that they're doing with their they have 11 languages um, spoken there they mentioned that you're the music teacher there um, but it was just it was really really great inspiring morning thank you member wood and sign me up please i'll definitely take you up on that um any other board member comments from the ether or elsewhere okay i'll, I'll do a very very quick were you i'll do a quick chairs report so if you want a board member comment come on in i'll save the Just chairs a couple report things. Um, I, I think i went back to excel in ed um and that's where and I don't know, I ha I'll have to look at where my suggested research projects came out, but there's a lot of research and information about what benefits um, communities and families and where where they're, you know, nationally where some things are headed. And um, hopefully Utah can get on board with some of those items. But um, I just a couple things. I, I appreciated the um, just the general feel there and the, the engagement with um, being proactive in um, education communities and and trying to look at where the research is and where it's headed. Um, what was the other thing? Sorry, there was one other thing I can't remember. I should have wrote down. Anyways, well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> there you go. All right, thank you, Vice Chair Earl. 